Welcome to the Specialty Products Company installation video for the SPC part number 73000 adjustable upper control arm. This control arm is used on a 2003 to 2007 Infiniti G35 Coupe, the 2003 to 2006 G35 sedan, and the 2003 to 2008 Nissan 350Z. This pair of patent pending adjustable front upper control arms will give you plus or minus 4 degrees of camber and plus or minus 4 degrees of caster change. SBC arms match the original equipment designed for clearance so that you can get 2 degrees of camber change without fender well interference. If more positive change is needed, use the included 2 degree camber shim for fixed change and dial the rest with your arms. The rubber isolated x-axis sealed flex joints retain original equipment bushing values for noise, vibration, and harshness while providing the handling qualities of a monoball. Optimized geometry and high strength forged steel components make this the strongest adjustable arm in the market today. Whether you want a cambered stance, improved handling, or minimize tire wear, this is the best arm for you. Always follow proper safety precautions associated with all the equipment used in this video. Read the installation instructions thoroughly. Raise and support the vehicle. Remove front tire and wheel assembly. Remove cotter pin and nut from the upper ball joint. Separate ball joint from spindle. Save ball joint to spindle adapter for reuse later. Remove bushing bolts holding upper control arm to the body. In some cases it may be necessary to remove strut assembly or compress spring to access the control arm bolts if a spring compressor is available. Remove upper control arm. Lay adjustable control arm over factory control arm, lining up the bushings. Turn adjusters until ball joints are lined up and the arms are approximately the same geometry. Note, ensure there is equal thread showing on each side of the adjuster. Install adjustable control arm into vehicle, making sure inboard forgings are aligned square to the bushing pockets. Lightly tighten adjuster jam nuts to keep inboard forgings from twisting. Torque upper control arm to bushing bolts to factory specifications. Install ball joint stud adapter into spindle, then ball joint into adapter. Install the supplied washer and castle nut and lightly tighten. Verify there is no gap between the upper and lower ball joint housing. Note, use pry bar between lower ball joint housing and spindle to push the lower housing up until there is no gap between the two halves. Use care not to damage rubber boot. Torque ball joint nut. Install new cotter pin. Reinstall tire and wheel assembly, lower vehicle. Finish alignment using provided adjusters. After alignment is complete, tighten all four jam nuts, making sure inboard forgings are aligned square with the bushing pockets. Wedge a pry bar between the forging and bushing pocket. Then tighten the inboard jam nut first, making sure the forging stays square in the pocket. Tighten the outboard jam nut. Repeat with the other legs and the other side. Important. Make sure pinch bolt is arranged with a nut facing outward. Again, 
Verify no gap between the upper and lower ball joint housing. Then torque the pinch bolt. Failure to tighten pinch bolt may result in damage to control arm. SBC arms match the original equipment design for clearance so you can get up to two degrees positive camber change without fender well interference. If more positive change is needed, use the included two degree camber shims for fixed change and dial in the rest with your arms. Start by removing the brake caliper and supporting it out of the way. bolt holding the ABS bracket to the spindle. Remove the brake rotor and place it out of the way. Remove the four bolts attaching the bearing hub assembly to the spindle. Remove the bearing hub and backing plate. Use caution not to damage the back of the bearing hub that supplies the ABS signal. Trim the locating tabs on the plastic dust cover. Then install the dust cover so the opening for the ABS sensor is facing straight up. With the two stock hub bolts in the lower positions, install the longer standard bolts supplied in the upper rearward position. Install the special bolt with a threaded hole in the very top position. Fit the tapered shim on the spindle. The thickest part will face upwards. Install the brake backing plate, then install the bearing hub. Tighten then torque all four bearing bolts to 58 to 72 pound feet. Install the stock ABS bracket bolt through the ABS wire bracket. Then install the supplied support bracket over the bolt along with the two thin washer shims. In most cases, this setup will provide the correct air gap between the ABS sensor and the hub. If air gap adjustment is needed, refer to the installation instructions for removal of shims. Fit this into the threaded head bolt and tighten securely. the hub turns freely and the ABS sensor is not contacting the hub. 
Now install the brake caliper shim with the thickest part of the shim up. Reinstall the brake rotor, then the brake caliper. Tighten and torque brake caliper bolts to 112 pound-feet. Reinstall the tire and wheel assembly and align the vehicle.